These giant crates showed up on a truck about a week ago. Let's open them up and see what's inside. It's a new milling machine. Welcome back to Cloud 42, I'm James. Well, in these crates, there is a new milling machine for the shop. Those of you who've been around the channel for a while know that I already have a milling machine. I've got a Grizzly G0704 over there that I've converted to CNC. And I, I love that little mill, it's great. It does have a few shortcomings. It is a light bench top mill and it has a very limited Y travel. I think stock, they're only about seven inches, maybe a little bit more. But then when you do a CNC conversion and you put a vise on that hangs over the back and you install double ball nuts on the ball screws, you start to lose some of that and lose and you get down to four or five inches that are really usable. So that's one limitation. The other is, you know, I just converted it and added a high speed spindle, which is great for milling out aluminum and making small aluminum parts. Not so big for hogging out a lot of steel. I haven't done a lot of work with it, but I really would like to have something heavier in the shop that can handle larger parts and can hog out larger amounts of steel. And so I decided to pick up a Precision Matthews PM940. Yeah, it's a PM940M. This is the gearhead drive two horsepower model. And uh, it is significantly heavier. I think the Grizzlies 350 pounds all up. This thing's about 1,300, 1,400 pounds all up installed. Comes in two crates. The small crate is the cast iron base that it sits on. That as shipped is about 400 pounds. And then the large crate is the mill itself, which is another 1,000 pounds. And believe it or not, you know, this is a residential address where I had them delivered, so I had to have lift gate delivery. And believe it or not, the guy showed up in the truck with that 400 pound crate on top of this crate. And that's how they were loaded in the truck and all he had was a pallet jack. And I just looked at him as, uh, how am I gonna get that down? He's like, I don't know, they just loaded it this way. So he actually loaded it off the truck, stacked, wobbling out onto the lift gate. I thought for sure he was gonna lose it, but he got it down to the ground. And then the guy was, the guy was great. I mean, really, with lift gate delivery, all he had to do was drop it in the street but he um, actually wheeled it back over to the truck and folded up the lift gate, wheeled it back over, and then the two of us were able to just muscle the 400 pound pallet off of the top of this, dropped it about a foot onto the back of the truck, and then he was able to get them out with the pallet jack and hauled them in here. So here they sit. Let me go get a crowbar and a hammer and let's break them open and see what's inside. Seriously? Seriously? Okay, that's one milling machine and one stand and it's very large. Okay, let me regroup here and let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, along with the mill and the base, of course, I ordered some accessories, I ordered a clamping kit and it appears that it's in here, such as it is. So this is the clamping kit. It has no latches. I can see the latches here are broken off. That's classy. And inside we've got all of our half inch studs and nothing else because it appears they're all poured into the bottom. Okay, 
nice. I've got some boxes that had something in them. I presume these contained the leveling feet, which I also ordered. And those are the leveling feet, and then they have studs. I presume these are the studs. It would be nice if they were in the boxes. Two, three, empty, empty. Four. Okay, good. We actually have four feet. I need four feet. I plan on setting up the mill today. And that looks like that is the ultra precision drill chuck that I ordered. Wow, that is spectacular. So that's a 5 8 drill chuck. I am not happy at all with how that was packaged or how that traveled. How on earth would you do that? I mean, honestly, this thing is. 400 pounds. How would you bounce this hard enough to blow all of that, to break the case, blow all of that out of it, all over the inside of this, knock all of these out of their boxes, do this to the drill chuck? Um, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Okay. Well, I'll dig all this stuff out and uh, get it all organized. And I think the next step is going to be to try to figure out how to pick this thing up and put it in position. Got my friend Jason here who came over to help me when I started moving the heavy stuff. Uh, if nothing else, he's here. He knows how to dial 911. If something <laughs> goes terribly wrong, I will try to get it on camera. So we've got the base here. This is only about 300 pounds and the legs of my engine hoist, this is just a two ton Harbor Freight special engine hoist. Um, it won't straddle the pallet, which is gonna be interesting for the mill, but I've got it in as close as I can, and then we've just muscled this thing off the side of the pallet, and we're gonna try to rig it with a couple of straps and lift it, it'll swing out, and then we should be able to wheel it into position. So, let's start with this side. And I've got this engine hoist rigged with two separate hooks so that I can put four, four ends of these straps in it. And it's not centered, but as soon as it starts to lift, it should swing out and end up hanging under the hook. went well. So far, no YouTube gold. I should be able to just pull this back. And I don't know how well you can see that. We've got a little chalk rectangle here on the floor that shows where we want it to land. But before we land it, need to install the leveling feet. And this is just a matter of running them up through the bottom and tightening the, the nuts down. And then these have uh, an adjustment in here so they can be uh, driven down. The, um, the whole pad actually extends out the bottom when you drive the bolt in so they expand and lift the machine so we can level it once it's down on the ground. Let's get these installed. I have seen many people say that there's not enough room in here and the manual says that you may actually have to cut the stud off to fit, but it's got a little bit of clearance, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue in this setup. So washer, nut. snug that down. Uh, if we get to the point of actually needing to level it, which I assume we will, 
then you have to loosen that nut and then use the square drive on the top to drive that down. But you need to put the other three on. Okay, so I think all that's left is just to lower this down into position. And this is the place where it always gets exciting. Try to do it as slowly as I can here. Let Jason kind of position it. Try not to overcook it and drop it. Wow, very good. That's pretty good. That's right where it needed to be. Get the slings off of it and roll this out of the way. Now let me see where we are for level. Need to come up a little bit on that side. And actually, once I plant this foot, there's a little bit of rock in this direction. Once I lower this foot a little bit, it'll actually be very close in that direction. And that direction is very close. That is close enough. I'll get a mill right level and level it once the machine's on, but I think that is going to work. Now the manual that comes with the mill gives instructions for how to actually get this thing off of the pallet. And unfortunately, they're pretty much useless because they tell you to take your cherry picker, take your engine crane. In fact, the photo they show is of this very model. This is the two-ton Harbor Freight one. Um, and actually straddle the legs over, set them on the ground, and lift the machine up, and then slide the pallet out from underneath. The problem is that that works if you have it just sitting on this sheet. You take the front rails off the sheet, but it never comes sitting just on the sheet. It's sitting on a pallet, and so there's not enough room uh, to get these over. They don't clear. So what we've done here is we've got a couple of sheets of three-quarter inch plywood, as a block to put the wheels on, then one more sheet that then has like a two and a half inch hole drilled about halfway through it with a Forstner bit so that the wheel will sit into that hole. This is an idea that Jason came up with. We're trying to figure out how to keep it from rolling off of the blocks. And so I think that will be secure enough. So the goal is gonna be rig the mill, lift it off of the pallet. We've already got the uh, nuts that we're anchoring it down here uh, free and off of the, uh, so it should lift cleanly. Probably have to slide the table back and forth. We've already run the mill head down as instructed in the manual. So we'll get that lifted clear, get the pallet out, then set the mill down onto blocks. And then we can re-rig the crane on the floor, re-lift it and wheel it over and set it into position. So I'm telling you that's what we plan to do so that when you see what actually happens, you'll understand what we were trying to do. <laughs> so I think we just need to rig this and see. So it should, there's a pocket on the side there that has that the adjustment bolt in it. And this should just sort of be in line with that, I think is how the manual says to do it. Okay, the weight's coming off. Yep. Okay. And we're free and pretty level. Yeah. Okay, let's take it up. Wow. That's actually working pretty well. Yeah. Well, I mean, you did say that out loud, but... There we go. Yay, don't forget there's a thousand pound mill hanging there. Now, of course, we can't wheel this over to its final position because the engine crane is sitting up on blocks. So we're gonna lower it down on the ground, but it can't go on the ground because there's not enough clearance under the table over the legs. So I've got some blocks. And these are two layers of stack two by eights. 
I'll just lower it on, lower it onto these. Okay. Am I doing the you want to do it? You can if you'd like. Just real gentle because it's gonna go. Hey, are we, down? we are. Let's lower it. There we go. Okay, so now we should be able to remove the just, blocks. Yeah, remove the blocks. Let me just. Okay. Good? I think that's good. Um, let's uh, see if we can move it. Stop there. Okay, we're clear, I think. Try pushing it in. Yeah, let's, uh, and it's because this is way in the air. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> We're hitting a light, but it'll swing out of the way. I need another inch. Your way? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, okay. Now, let me see if I can start putting screws in. That's one in. If we, the more we can get in while it's still hanging, the better. The better. And that's it. Right, cool. Okay. That was the most terrifying part. <laughs> My heart rate is up. Oh, 89. It's not that high. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I was worried about this tipping over, I'm not now. Okay, well, it's landed, it's in position. Uh, I think the position is all gonna work out. Of course, if at some point we decide that it needs to move a little bit, we can always sling it again, lift the whole thing with the base, shift it a little, put it down. Um, not planning on doing that right away. Now this actually does have holes in the side of the casting and you're supposed to be able to put one inch steel rod, 25 millimeter, all the way through it and then on in two places and then slide a forklift under it and move this thing around with a forklift. If you haven't, you've seen most of my garage today, I don't have a forklift, so. I think it's gonna sit where it is. I'm pretty happy with this. And I uh, think we need to get some coffee and go to the store and buy a 12 millimeter socket driver because I don't actually own one. Okay, this mill doesn't come fully assembled. There are a few things that would increase the total size of the mill. And because of that, they're left off so that they can use a smaller crate. And the first one is the Z motor. Now there is a crank down on the side of the shaft for raising and lowering the head uh, in the Z axis, but it is a lot of work. There's not a lot of clearance and it takes a lot of cranking to move this up and down. So they actually have a power, um, a power feed to raise and lower it. And I don't think you would use this for actual uh, milling, for like, you know, drilling or uh, boring operations. There's a separate power down feed on the head for that, on the, on the quill. This is just for, or for raising and lowering the head. And to install it, 
there's just a keyed shaft and there's a keyed coupler in the top here and it just drops right in drops down and then there are four tapped holes for screws and those all lined up beautifully Snug these down until they all make contact, and then we'll go around and tighten them up. Okay, that should be that. Let me turn the crank a little bit and just make sure this isn't all binding up. Nope. Still moves freely, but I can still feel the uh, I can feel the extra drag uh, because of the gear motor up here. So that should be that. Now let's go down and install the x-axis power feed. Okay, this mill also comes with an x-axis power feed and this is just the end of the table and you can see that they have removed the crank handle that would be here and installed a gear. And then they have provided pre-wired uh, power feed motor and this is just a normal power feed motor that would normally hang down vertically but in this case they've got it with a little spur gear that will, a little pinion that will engage this gear and a couple of slots and a bracket attached to the end of the table with a couple of screws to just attach this so that the gears mesh. Now to set the gear lash, you don't want these gears too tightly together. They'll kind of go as they run and you want them to run freely so they need a little bit of backlash. So they recommend taking a piece of greased paper. This is just oiled with whey lube and I'll put that there and then mesh the gears on that paper. And then when we turn it, it'll eject the paper and it should leave the right amount of gear lash. So this should go right onto these screws. The screws have washers and lock washers and these were pre-installed, though one of them had rattled loose and I found it in the bottom of the crate. So. That one's just a little bit tight. Kind of a hokey setup. I'm not super pleased with it. Perhaps I will um, drill and tap the end of the table and do something better at some point. But it's probably best to get some experience with the stock setup before I decide if it actually needs to be replaced. So it's sitting on the gear. So the gears are meshed with the paper between the teeth. So I'll go ahead and snug these down. Now in theory, if that paper trick worked, then this should be, the gear lash should be exactly right. You go to the other end here and turn the crank handle and run that paper out. There it goes. And I hear a little bit more sound from those than I like. I think it might be a little bit too tight. It's really hard to adjust though because I can't really hold one gear stationary and move the other one. Let me just loosen this and tap it up ever so slightly. changes it. Oh, that's much quieter. Let's tighten it back down. Again, I wish I could hold the pinion still and measure this.
I'm just turning it around, checking it several positions. Make sure we've got good, good engagement, but still have so, a little bit of backlash. And we do, I'm happy with that. Sorry, I know you can't see that. But I think that is gonna work. Unfortunately, I don't think I can put it off any longer. Next thing to do is to peel off all this paper, get out some WD-40 and some rags and clean all of the grease off of all the surfaces of this thing. And then we can power it up and give it a try. Well, what just took you about a minute to watch took me about two hours to do. And the machine cleaned up beautifully. I'm very happy with the grind on the table surface. It seems to be pretty flat. I ran some precision flat ground stones over it. Now this machine has the hardways option, which has an induction hardened table surface and dovetail ways. And the idea there is to make them more durable so they'll last longer. Though this is not gonna be a CNC mill and this is not a production shop. So for my use, they'll last virtually forever. So let me power this up and give you a tour. So this does have the Power Z motor that will run the head up and down. So that's up. I'm very happy with this, it's nice and quiet. Uh, definitely wanna loosen the gib before you do that, but of course it's powerful enough to overcome it even if you don't unclamp it. And down, and then it has limit switches to stop at the end of travel. Now the spindle on this is gear driven. There's a little sight glass over here and it's an oil bathed gear train. And it's got two knobs over here to set it to one of six speeds between 90 RPM and 1970 RPM. So it's not a super fast spindle, but it should have a ton of grunt for hogging out steel or uh, running large face mills, which is really what I was looking for. Wouldn't be appropriate for a CNC for that. You would want the VFD version that goes to higher RPMs but I've got it set right now to 690 RPM. I've got a half inch drill on the chuck. And I'm pretty happy with it. I've run it through all the speeds. It runs nice and quiet. I was afraid that the straight cut gears were gonna be really loud, but it doesn't seem that that's the case. Now this has the fine feed for the quill. So you have the normal quill action, pop the handles out and you have the fine feed handle. And then this mill has the power down feed option. So I can put this in gear and I can choose one of three down feeds, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.18, or 0.26 millimeters per revolution. And that will tie the fine feed handle to the gear train. So when it's running, that spins and then I can just pull out the handle and the quill will automatically down feed. And then when I reach the bottom and I want to retract, just slap the handle in and it comes right back up. And so that'll be really handy for drilling operations or for boring in particular. We can get a boring head, uh, making a nice smooth bore with a nice consistent surface finish. So the, you get the crankways down here. That all works really well. The power X feed. Noisy, but serviceable. So I still need to get a vise for this machine. The manual says that a four inch vise is appropriate. Uh, I'm not buying it. Uh, this is a life-size cutout that I made of a Curt DX6, six inch vise. 
just for testing the fit, and I think this is really gonna be about the right size for this machine. Uh, it fits nicely on the table. It allows the full travel. I might have to raise the, uh, the bellows here about an inch to get full travel to the rear. And then the mill can also reach all the way, even without doing that, it can reach all the way to the full nine inch clamping uh, range of the vise. Plus, if I turn the vise sideways, the holes are the right spacing to drop into the outer T-slots. The other thing that this mill does not have is a DRO. There is a DRO option. It was back ordered and I opted to go ahead and get the mill. And I have ordered a four axis DRO kit from DROPROS and that actually should be here in a couple of days. And so I'll do another video when I get ready to put that on. The travels on this thing end up being greater than advertised. I'm getting about 14 inches in Y, about 28 in X, and a full 20 inches in Z. And then there's five inches on the quill. So I ordered a four axis DRO, so I should be able to put a scale on the quill and on the Z axis on the head and have them summed together in the DRO so I can reposition the head and maintain the position of my DRO. And we will get to that when the parts come in. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.